Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today, literally in paradise here at Speedy Jeff's Man Cave with Dan and I to check out the Koenigsegg Regera Honey. We're going to take a full look at this car today, but just very quickly, we're in some extraordinary company. The likes of the Agera RSs, the Senna, the Speedtail, the Porsches, the MSOX, the Gunther Works, the P1, Chiron 110, the Vader and Thor, another Regera, and then this car, the world's first hypercar with an NFT, but also the world's first scannable hypercar, which I will explain and demonstrate shortly. We're going to go through the details of the Regera honey before heading out for a short drive to experience what this is like out here in California. In just a moment we can go through all of the details of honey then, this particular Koenigsegg Regera and what makes it quite so special. The car that was launched and unveiled on a live stream via Lemonade TV with a number of the owners of the cars in this collection, along with Christian von Koenigsegg and his son Sebastian von Koenigsegg, and I was lucky to be part of that. But we'll come to the car in just a moment because I'd like to take a quick look around the awesomeness of this man cave and the extraordinary cars that are here as well. Starting with the second of the 80 Regeras in total, we then have two more Koenigseggs. These are actually the last two of the Agueras, the Agera Final Edition that came after the Agera RS. We have Vader and then we have Thor just behind. If we come around, we have a Bugatti, the Chiron 110 years car. Now this has something that is quite distinct. If you look at it closely, you'll notice the satin exposed carbon fiber weave, and then you have the satin painted sections, they're exactly the same. They give the same finish, which is a totally bespoke thing that I've never seen elsewhere. We then have a McLaren P1 carbon series, the full exposed carbon body with the red pinstripe details around it, one of only five in total. Before we've got the reimagined 911 by Gunter Works based on the 993, full carbon body, four liter naturally aspirated flat six, sitting underneath, the Pagani Huayra BC, one of the original 20. Then we've got a GT3 RS over a GT4 before this entire area. Now the collection is shared, or the space is shared between a number of different collectors, I should say. And we do in fact have four of the 10 MSOXs in a line. In fact, there are six as part of the total collection, but these were made by MSO, McLaren Special Operations, featuring some parts effectively from the GT4 cars, and they were handed over to the customers with a special opportunity to drive them at Spring Mountain over in Nevada. Next to those though, we've got four GT3 RSs, which are effectively used as the track cars of the collection before four more hypercars. We have Danamai's Speedtail in the all black, one of 106. We've got a McLaren Senna, one of 500. And then we have two more Koenigseggs, Valhall and Draken, both of which are of the 25 Agera RSs. But the names Valhall and Draken bring us back around towards Honey. It's become quite the norm for Koenigsegg customers to effectively give their cars names. In this case, the name Honey was given to the car by Dan Amai due to its connection to a song by Sebastian von Koenigsegg. Now, Christian's son, Sebastian, makes music, makes tracks, and made a specific song that is now linked to this car, so much so that if you scan the logo on the side using the Verify app, it will in fact bring up a video by Christian and then play the song that is uniquely linked to it. Now this was launched, as I said, on a live stream that I got to be part of when effectively the car was presented, also with the unique angle that it has an NFT associated with the car. Now, of course, this is new technology, crypto and that world, but this we believe is the first hypercar in the world to have an NFT attached to it. Now to talk a little bit about the Regera itself, this particular car is in the full exposed carbon body with the Monterey blue pinstripes and accents that you can see around. But not only that, notice the reflections and the extra sparkle, which comes from diamond dust, literally in the lacquer over the carbon fiber. It is quite fantastic to look at. It's a hybrid. We've got a five liter twin turbocharged V8. The combustion engine alone makes 1,115 horsepower, supported by three electric motors, which make an additional 707. Now you might be thinking that adds up to about 1,800, but due to the different torque charts and power charts, effectively you get a total output of 1,500. It's not bad, hey, 1,500 horsepower. This is ballistically fast with the Koenigsegg direct drive gearbox as well. But I want to show you 
the party trick. If you're not familiar with this, I've got the key to the car just here, which is a lovely thing to hold. If you double press the buttons, let's say the driver's door here, watch what happens. Yes, it's that clever. It folds itself open with electric motors. It also has sensors to make sure that it doesn't hit or catch on the floor. You can do exactly the same with all of the other elements of the car. For example, opening up the passenger door, you can open up the front clamshell as well to open up the storage space that you have up front. And you can even open up the rear, which is just wow to look at. It is a transformer in every possible sense of the word. And this is a work of art to see back here, the engine, or as much as you can see of it, all of the carbon fiber and the suspension components as well. To close all of this back down then, which as I said, you can do effectively all in one or manually run through the different components. We'll wait for all of the parts just to close themselves back down for a moment before taking a seat inside. Here, everything latching into place to show you a little bit of the inside here at the moment the car is off as an aside you can actually press the start button and use what it calls sneak ev where effectively all you do is pop it into gear and then you can drive it electrically to get started now i want to close up the passenger door very quickly so i'll just show you where the key can live as well now maybe we pop it back into neutral just for the moment so pressing the button on the key Close the door down and the key itself can stow away just there beside the steering wheel on the dashboard. So, should we take this, go for a little drive in Honey, the Koenigsegg Regera? Let's do it. This is where it is going to get very, very cool. Koenigsegg Regera, press the button to close the door. I know you don't need a car that does that, but how cool is it to have a car that does that? Anyway, we're in Sneak EV into gear and all we do is start driving i've got the air conditioning blasting because it is very humid and muggy today but here we go let's head out and go enjoy the drive we've got the combustion engine fired up now heading out onto a highway for a short stretch to go find some flowing roads driving in the regera honey now i must confess i have driven the regera twice before once with danamai's previous candy apple red car and once with my friend zach's garage in the uk as well so it's slightly less intimidating to get back behind the wheel but instantly aware that this is a very very special very powerful very potent machine now the regera is actually the GT car, you could say, from the Koenigsegg lineup. It's a lineup that now features multiple models, the Yesco being the track-focused car, the Jamira being the, well, four-seater hypercar, which is still absurd to think about. But this has one and a half thousand horsepower under my right foot. And here we are for the moment, taking it easy, nice and chilled, probably everybody thinking, what is that for a car? As I am just going nice and easily will I get myself a little bit more acquainted with it a little bit more comfortable but the direct drive gearbox is the most fascinating thing because you aren't going up and down through gears as you might think it doesn't work like a normal car it's effectively once through the rev range maximum revs is when you're going 400 plus kilometers per hour over 250 miles per hour and this car will do that and if you mash your foot on the throttle pedal from zero, it will also do a gigantic smoky burnout all the way to very, very, very fast, which is moderately terrifying. But when you're cruising along, it actually rides really nicely. It feels so special. Looking at all of this carbon fiber, that whole experience of doors actually getting into the car in the first place. And then if you do, let's say accelerate, you get the most insane noises the flutters of the turbos and the way it's all set up, almost mimicking the effect of downshifting going through the gears, but responding almost immediately. <laughs> this feels totally surreal right now, driving in Orange County, California, in the Koenigsegg 
Bruguera. Now one thing, you do have to control everything like the seats and the mirrors all through the touchscreen, which takes a little bit of getting used to. If you're not that way inclined, it can be a little bit of a fiddle to try and find the right settings, to try and find the right modes. I just slow down for a moment to accelerate a little bit. I mean, I'm just touching on the surface of the acceleration of the Canixec Regera. This car is so phenomenally fast, you can't even really put the performance figures into the real world, because when you're out on the public highway, you're never going to get close to even scratching on the surface of what it's capable of doing. Actually, engine brakes quite hard as well, which means almost one foot driving, which is quite interesting. I didn't really take that in from my previous experiences. When you come to a stop, sometimes it then goes into the sneak EV mode, but effectively you're largely driving it on the combustion engine. You can drive on the electric motors if you want. Ah, this is convenient. At the front of a traffic light, which means an opportunity to accelerate a little bit, perhaps not too much, just within reason to enjoy it right. <laughs> I'm reluctant to press too hard on the throttle pedal because it's so fast and it's such a different technology as well. It's quite hard to get your head around it and to actually understand how it drives and how it works because it's not the same as other cars. It's not the same as driving, let's say, in a Bugatti Chiron. It's its own thing. It does it its own way. But as we come down here towards the Newport coast and looking out over the Pacific Ocean, driving in the Koenigsegg Regera, I mean, it's not a typically sunny California day, but you're not going to see me complaining right now. <laughs> this, is, this is wild. This is unreal. We go down towards the coast and then head back uphill from there. Having been part of the live stream for this car, I've been so excited to, we could say, meet it. And to now be at the wheel of it. Here of all places. This is a pretty epic drive. <laughs> there are very few words for how epic this is. But one of the craziest sensations about the Regera is that it doesn't translate on the video how quickly it's going because of how fast it accelerates but how it's not getting up to a red line and then shifting up to the next gear so you don't get that let's say sense of drama of the acceleration in the same way it doesn't really carry through it's more well it's kind of in some ways like driving an electric car in that respect in not getting the full sound and sense from it i'm also seeing the wing pitching around a little bit with the ghost package with the additional flicks that this car has too and just it's everything's innovative everything's unique you know having the full active bodywork having the new approach to each different design element and i remember the first time i ever rode in a regera was actually with christian von koenigsegg out at the factory in angleholm in sweden when it had just been introduced so quite a long time ago and obviously it took a long time to get the technology implemented and to get it uh, working correctly and, and fully functioning and reliable for customers but it was so far and it still is so far ahead of its time that's what really makes this stand out in such a big way is that it's just game changing and if I put my foot down here I can't begin to explain the feeling when you go all the way from zero to speed limit just in one pull, in one smooth single acceleration without having that shift feeling. The one benefit of very long traffic lights is being able to do this. It lit up traction there, by the way. A huge, huge thank you to Dan and I for this opportunity because that thunderous grumble followed by the very quick blow off and snap as well. The sounds, the drama, the whole thing. The whole thing is just... Honestly, 
い<笑>
we have this light blue car. I actually really quite like that, the light blue with the white pinstripe details and the white wheels to match. So five of the 10 MSOXs all together. How insane is that? And also, this Senna, by the way, is in a color called MSO Burton Blue. Many of you will know my name is Tim Burton, which I've always found quite funny. This color has nothing to do with me, by the way. A lot of people think this is like my color or something. Nope, it's named after somebody else, not me, which is quite unusual. Anyway, it's a nice looking color, that's for sure, but it's not the same as my beloved, much lighter MSO Cerulean Blue. This has been quite the drive. It is a very spectacular drive. It is a very exciting experience as well, being in the Koenigsegg Regera. As I said, the Ghost Squadron, uh, the Ghost Package, I should say, gives you the extra flicks. And the same that you see either side of the wing at the rear, which you can raise and lower if you'd prefer to have the slightly cleaner look. And then that traditional wraparound windscreen that Koenigseggs have always had with that bobbled roof, central windscreen wiper, which you actually don't notice when you're driving. You might think that would annoy you, but you don't, basically don't really pay all that much attention to it. Anyway, I'm gonna remember taking that out. It's an insane car. It's an absolutely out of this world car to experience. And the amount of torque that it produces, that 2,300 Newton meters, this is why I was referring to it as being like a different driving experience, because effectively you're at a level of torque in line more with an electric car instantly and the amount of it and not shifting through the gears. So it's like being in an electric car with the sound of a combustion engine, which is obviously, and the feel of a combustion engine, the vibrations, the shaking, obviously something really quite different. Anyway, I can't say thank you enough to Dan and I for being part of the launch of this car originally, and now having got the opportunity to literally meet it out here in the United States and to take it for a drive as well. For now though, that is all. Thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I appreciate your support an awful lot. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.